Hello and welcome to what is arguably the most difficult solo and or solo flawless dungeon that Bungie has released thus far in Vesper's Host, and it is strictly because of the final boss, the Corrupted Puppeteer. Today, I'm gonna do my best to guide you through this place on every class. Note that I normally do not take artifact perks for these runs so that this video will be relevant for as long as possible. However, there are some clips in this video that utilize the grenade launcher based perks of episode two, and I took them specifically because they do not alter my strategy or my build. They simply speed up the process of killing certain targets by a little bit, namely bosses. Obviously, you should take any and all artifact perks that work with your build, or perhaps wait for a time where the solo operative artifact perk is available. Currently, Titan appears to be the easiest of the three classes to complete the dungeon, while Hunter is the most difficult. Also, this guide is directed at people with good gear, good weapons, and a strong understanding of their class. This also assumes that you have soloed multiple dungeons, at least one of the previous three, as this dungeon, or rather the final boss, is on par with some of the things that have released over the past two years in terms of difficulty. And by on par, I mean harder. This guide also does not utilize any glitches or cheese spots either. The first encounter is not that big of a deal, and should only take about 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Pretty much any kind of subclass setup on any class will be sufficient here, whatever you feel most comfortable with, but I do ultimately recommend some kind of burst damage super for the Briggs that you will have to deal with, preferably with a Star Eater class item to deal some big damage. Otherwise, a solid primary, I was using Kvostov, something like a rocket sidearm, and a good heavy burst weapon like a GL, I used Edge Transit with Envious and Bait, will work for this encounter. If you know how this encounter works, which you should, then you have 99% of what you need to know about doing the encounter by yourself. So let's talk about the things that will cause you to fail. Number one, honestly, is hubris. Yes, this is normal mode, but things will still kill you if you don't take them seriously. Dregs with shotguns hurt pretty badly. Shanks can gang up on you. Both of them respawn incredibly quickly. The yellow bar sniper vandals hurt pretty badly as well, and there are some areas with minimal cover. If you don't kill them in the heart room, for example, they can walk up the stairs and snipe you if you play in the back of the room. Number two is the operator and scanner buffs. When you pick up a nuke, make sure you have no buffs on you because if you make it back to the main room with a buff, you're probably going to die. Number three, dropping a nuke off of a cliff or it getting stuck somewhere. It's not gonna kill your run, but it's just a big time waste because you need to do the whole thing over again. Also, make sure you're standing away from a nuke if the timer is about to run out. It doesn't kill you outright, but it still hurts you. And number four is the big brig. It hurts pretty bad if you knock its face off and you don't have enough damage to deal with it launching its own nukes back at you. Now just some general advice. When bringing a nuke back to the main room, you're gonna need to drop it to kill the brig. Try to drop it somewhat near where you are going to need to inevitably dunk it. Don't just drop it wherever, especially if you're low on time. Don't be shy about burning a super on the brig either. It is very easy to just farm another one. Next, if you're having trouble killing the brigs, specifically the big one, what you can do is simply get the brig very, very weak, let your nuke expire somewhere away from you, and then get another nuke. The Brig does not respawn, so if you get another nuke, the Brig will be very weak from the last time. You kill it, boom, you're done. Again, this fight is really not anything too tough. It shouldn't take you a long time. If you struggle here, you are probably not going to do too well in the future encounters, so I would get to practicing. The second encounter is also not as big of a deal. I think it's actually much less stressful than other second encounters in dungeons we've had recently, like Spire, Ghost, Warlord's Ruin, because it moves pretty quickly and the damage phase is not very intimidating. Titans, I'm going to suggest Prismatic with Glacial Quake and a Star Eater class item with Tractor Cannon. You are able to very easily four-phase this encounter. Three-phase isn't that hard either, if not a bit inconsistent at times. You need the servitors to cooperate, and you need your crystals to be shattering in the right spots, and sometimes that just doesn't happen. But a four-phase is almost guaranteed, even if you forget to stack Feast of Light, which hopefully you don't, because I did in my run. 
Warlocks and Hunters, you're going to want to roll with some kind of a burst damage super on what is likely to be a Prismatic subclass. Hunters, that's Tether if it ever gets re-enabled. Silence and Squall, Gathering Storm, those are great. Warlocks, Nova Bomb, I think is really the only play here. Then you're going to use either Wardcliff Coil or Dimensional Hypotrochoid, which is the Neo Muna Waveframe Heavy Grenade Launcher with Envious Assassin and One for All. Wardcliff Coil does some good chunky damage, but you are at a much higher risk of accidentally blowing yourself up compared to Dimensional. And personally, I prefer Dimensional Hypotrochoid way, way, way more than trying to pull off Wardcliff Coil. If you're on Wardcliff, you're probably going to want to use Last Signal, which is the Area Denial GL from Episode 1, which is craftable, because it can trigger the Grenade Launcher Artifact perks from Episode 2. Outside of Episode 2, consult the Artifact, because if you're in the world of soloing dungeons and you've made it this far, you probably know how to read the Artifact for Synergy. I'm also going to highly, highly suggest Risk Runner for this encounter if possible. If you're running Wardcliff, this is gonna involve some weapon swapping and thus potentially some ammo farming may be required. Yet another reason I prefer Dimensional Hypotrochoid. The overwhelming majority of damage here is Arc. So not only will you be highly resistant, but you'll also be a killing machine. Hunters don't need it as much since you're probably gonna be on some sort of prismatic melee setup, which just goes infinite anyway but Risk Runner is helpful for the Shank area. I like to fight underneath the boss because, well, the boss can't hit you if they can't see you, and they're actually a big pain point in this encounter. If you're on Risk Runner, which, again, I really think you should be, then you should have a zero issue with this part of the fight as every class has a way to heal on Prismatic. Knockout for Titans, Devour for Warlocks, Combo Blow Spam on Hunters. When the Machine Priest spawns, which is triggered by killing all of the Invis Orange Bar Vandals, just kill it immediately. You want to get to the next phase ASAP. So try not to zone out here just endlessly killing enemies. Kill the Machine Priest as soon as possible. Other than resource farming, ammo farming, there's no reason to be in this room. The goal should always be to get teleported away. Burn special, burn heavy if you gotta, just get out of here. When you get teleported, much like the US economy, you want a soft landing. I one time did not soft land, and the game brought me to 1 HP. I'm sure it doesn't happen every single time, but better safe than sorry. There are six explosive shanks in this room, and your priority should be to kill all of them before doing anything else. Strafe to the right of where you land for a good view of most, if not all of them. If one happens to get close, create space quickly, but keep in mind that a finisher on an explosive shank will punt them away. So as a last resort, mash the finisher if you happen to see one in your face and you think you can finish it. If one does get in your face though, try to get away, it's going to be very difficult, maybe pop your super for some damage resistance, and just hope for the best. You will be able to farm another super very quickly. After that, it is a game of avoiding bombs, finishing off the shanks, and doing the main objective, all of which work the same way. The bombs themselves that the servitor is dealing out aren't that big of a deal when you're ready for them. You're full HP, there's no enemies, you know, they're no big deal. One or two is not going to kill you. The bombs are bad when you manage to get like five of them exploding near you or when you're just not ready for them. Maybe you're low HP. They have a little bit of knockback as well. I almost fell off a couple of times and in this rare instance, I'm not talking about my YouTube channel. After a couple of cycles of this, we're ready for damage. Note that the boss will spit out a bunch of bombs around the same time as you're killing the suppressor shank. Be sure to line of sight them or bait them to a different side. Just don't go in right away, because then you're going to run into a bunch of bombs. Try to make sure you're full HP going into this, because the bombs and the boss can kill you. Finally, watch for a late integration as the boss is falling apart. You could still be under the effects of an integration as this is happening. Titans. Hit the tractor, pop your super, try to spam crystals so that they're hitting everything. Don't go too far up. Warlocks and hunters, pop your supers, let your weapons fly, do as much as you can. Warlocks, if you want to pop transcendence and throw a grenade with facet of command and hope for some free reloads, go for it. Hunters might be able to do that as well. Rinse, repeat until dead. The number one thing that's going to kill you here, in my opinion, are the explosive shanks. They can sneak up on you. Their AoE is huge for some reason here. You do not want one within 
10 meters of you. Number two is probably boss damage plus mechanic combo. You should avoid doing the suppression mechanic at anything other than full HP. As long as you do that and you don't have something weird happen, you should be fine. There are also some times where the boss upstairs will just stop their attack sequence, which can make for an awkward situation where you're not sure if it's safe to really do anything. Just bait out an attack and go on the next one. Number three is just going to be in the middle of generic combat, fighting enemies, waiting for the machine priest to come out. The boss hurts in this room. Again, that's why I liked fighting underneath the boss so that I completely eliminate their attacks. And number four would just be shooting a panel incorrectly, which is kind of on you to know what you need to shoot. This fight, despite it potentially being a 15 to 30 minute experience for some people, maybe not 30 minutes, probably about 20, isn't that brutal of a fight and i think is actually a good mid-tier fight for people to get into the mindset of this next generation of solo dungeon encounters if you haven't done them at all you should still get some reps in this encounter there are absolutely things that can go wrong and getting some damage reps in also helps so that you know what you need to do when you need to do it but if you're familiar with the current era of solo dungeon stuff I don't think this boss will be a huge challenge for anyone on any class. Then, quick platforming section. This shouldn't be too big of a deal besides a couple of spots. The first being immediately after the second boss with the three vandals and the brig. They can get some pot shots on you as you're jumping up. Don't take them lightly. The brig can shove you the hell off of this platform too if you get too close. It might be worth swapping to a sniper, scooping some green for the second encounter, and then sniping them if you're that worried. It shouldn't be that big of a deal, but just be careful. Then I would say the final platforming section can get a little dicey. I almost died in my flawless because I kept coping that this platform that I tried to land on can actually be landed on. Uh, it can't. I've done this like five times now. I don't know why I keep trying it, but fortunately there is a place to land underneath. So... Swap to grapple, you're chilling. Final boss. This boss will test your patience more than any solo dungeon boss before it. This is yet another long fight. It can actually be pretty short. I know the two phase exists, and even doing this in three phases is really impressive, but it is a very, very high skill strategy to execute that's more about optimizing for speed. I imagine a lot of you are more defensively minded. I'm more defensively minded. My first kill, I think, took like seven, maybe even eight phases. You are here for a long time, not a good time. And no, I am not going to be talking about any sort of cheese spots in this encounter. I'm sure the comments got you handled on that one. I've seen the cheese spot. I'm sorry. It's not my tempo. I know Bungie even gave movie of the week to someone using the cheese spot. I'm sorry. I don't care. But comments probably got you. I'm going to preface this section with my recommendation for classes though. Titans, probably have it the easiest. It's somewhat close with Warlocks. Hunters, this was miserable. I'm not gonna lie to you. Absolutely miserable on Hunter. For Titan, I stuck with Solar the whole time swapping between Lorelei and then Pyrogale for DPS. Warlocks, I think I'm also gonna recommend Solar with Speaker's Sight and a Heal Grenade. I opted for Choir of One and an auto-loading edge transit setup here while using Song of Flame to deal with a lot of the copies during boss damage. Hunters, I, I mean, it's basically free if you use Prismatic pre-boss damage. Like, that section's not too bad, but that's not the hard part. The hard part is boss damage, and I imagine most people will trend in the direction of an Anarchy-type setup, which I will explain when we get to boss damage. Otherwise, during pre-boss damage phases, I would stick to shorter range weapons since the average distance of engagement here is probably 10 meters or less. Like, I wouldn't be bringing a pulse or a scout in here. Weapons I used were actually mainly sidearms. Rocket sidearms, heliocentric with heel clip and incandescent, Michael's reverence from Root of Nightmares, any well-rolled sidearm, both primary and special ammo using, they're actually pretty nice here. I know people are likely to bring up Grand Overture or Leviathan's Breath or something for boss damage purposes. If if it's working for you, great. I did not like it for my playstyle, but they are both serviceable weapons here. 
First room, keynotes. Number one, try to get all the suppressor stuff done quickly. Try to get both puppets in one blast. They hurt a little bit, but they're pretty fragile in terms of their HP. Number two, shotgun vandals hurt really bad and should be somewhat of a priority to kill. Remember, you got unlimited time here, unlimited time. If you feel like there's a lot of stuff shooting at you, take some time to clear some enemies. Number three, don't be afraid to double check which number panel you need to shoot if you forgot. You have come this far. Do not die because you couldn't remember if it was two or three. Number four, buff deposit consistency is important. If you dunk the buffs into different spots every time, you're going to be confused when you enter one of the two nuke rooms to do that step of the fight. By putting the buffs in the same spots every time, you will know where to go and what to expect in those nuke rooms every time. In my Flawless, I was putting red on right, yellow in the back left, and blue in the front left. It's just what I preferred. When you're done in this room, whatever side has the sirens going off will have the sirens for every phase here on out. Personally, I wanted the blue room, aka the left side, because it was a bit of a time save, but in my Flawless, I got red. Red room is definitely the more dangerous room, as there isn't much cover to work with in pretty much all aspects of the room, save for like the two little crates, hidey holes in the corners, but even those aren't completely safe. You can also jump on top of this whatever this is in the middle of the room to avoid the boss for a little bit. Otherwise, picking up buffs, running around, checking copies, you are vulnerable from basically everywhere. Try to stay in cover as much as possible and use any tools that will help you stay alive. Healing grenade, for one, if you have access to it. The reason why red room first is a time loss for me is because I did not deposit the scanner back into the fridge after killing the correct copy for the nuke. I did not think it was worth the risk of potentially dying this far into the run because the boss hit a bunch of snipes in a row on me. I would much rather go get another scanner than risk dying. It's definitely not impossible to do, but I would say don't take the risk. This boss does not miss. Blue room, much safer, much easier to deal with, more cover. Don't take it for granted either, especially with the radiation dudes running around and being annoying. If you get blue room first, it is much easier to deposit the scanner buff before grabbing the nuke, and you can grab the operator buff before you leave to go to the other room, saving you a little bit of time there as well. After the second nuke is where I make a loadout swap for the boss arena. I'm swapping the surges, I'm swapping the time dilations, reload mods, all that kind of stuff. You're not going to have a ton of orb generating opportunities though, so try to make orbs on your way up from the limited amount of enemies that stand before you. Again, unlimited time here. There is no urgency to get up there quickly. I was able to make three orbs on my Titan thanks to heavy handed times two and hammer throw. Warlocks, make sure you got a siphon mod and just kill a couple of enemies, allowing for the internal cooldown of siphon to reset. Hunters, I was running triple heavy handed, so orbs shouldn't be a problem there either. Once you're ready, launch up into the boss damage room. While each class will have to deal with this part in their own unique way, the premise is the same across all of them. Jump around like a moron, avoiding lightning while trying to deal as much damage as possible to the boss. Titans. I have seen Solar. I have seen Prismatic on this fight. I went with Solar, as I found it helped my survivability quite a lot, swapping off of Lorelei and onto Pyrogale for boss damage. I tried a lot of different loadouts, but I ultimately went with a Baron Action and Parasite for boss damage. I was getting really annoyed with all the clones, so I turned that into my offense. Each clone is four stacks of Parasite boosted damage. I don't know why it's not five. Shanks and Deepstone Crypt are worth five. Anyway, each clone is four stacks, up to a max of 20 stacks. I did not try to get 20 stacks pretty much ever outside of the opening shot that I took opting for a shot every, I would say, zero to two kills, depending on the situation. I used my hammer to get killing blows to give me more super energy via hands-on helmet mods so that I would be able to pop at least two supers. And I think two is the best you're going to be able to hope for on Solar Titan for the most part. A Baron action was for weakening these clones from afar to prime them for a hammer kill in combination with my solar surges that were hopefully still active. If I ever lost my hammer, I just shot all of the clones to death and I spammed parasite shots with 
solar loader reload speed or solar holster. Solar loader, solar holster. Have fun with that. At some point, it is purely worth it to just spam zero stacked parasite shots at the boss. I would rather spam low worms hunger stacked shots than go for a bunch of big ones. The damage trade-off isn't really worth trying to stack it super high in my opinion. Again, I tried a lot of things. Grand Overture, Levy Breath, Anarchy. Parasite was the first thing that really clicked for me on Titan for how I was mentally handling the situation. I also tried to stay up on the platforms the boss uses if I could. Lightning does strike there as well, but generally you could just hop back and forth from the main area to the boss platforms, which I realize is easier said than done. The main area tends to just get completely covered, and while there are safe spots to stand, one wrong move or getting bumped could seal the deal. Believe it or not, in all of my attempts doing this boss when actually going for flawless, I don't think I ever died to the lightning. It was usually the boss or the clones killing me. Warlocks have some breathing room with a healing rift, although you should probably be on Phoenix Dive if you have the muscle memory built up because you just don't want to really be standing still. On top of a healing grenade powered with Speaker's Sight and Song of Flame for some survivability and killing power on the clones. As I said earlier, I went with Choir of One and Edge Transit for DPS. Choir of One also being great at insta-giving some of these clones. Just make sure you keep some ammo for the boss as well. I waited to pop Song of Flame until the boss teleported to maximize the amount of targets that I would hit. Choir of One's precision aim down sights damage is not something to sleep on either, especially because in the second half of a damage phase, the room to the bunker stays open and the bunker doesn't get hit by lightning strikes, although enemies will wander over to you. There is one lightning strike that can hit kind of nearby, so don't wander too far out. Not to mention that the boss can be hit from this bunker almost regardless of where they are positioned. So try to leverage that as much as possible. Just be careful if you're using a grenade launcher because slightly off positioning will result in you restarting this entire fight. The stag has also been getting some use here in order to keep rift uptime high and thus healing and damage resistance high. Again, I'm just not sure how much you want to be standing still here. Hunters, I'm going to keep it a buck. I have not soloed this boss on a hunter yet. I don't know if I ever will. I have done enough continuous damage phases to know that the strategy works, but I have not been able to piece it all together in one run, and this is the first time that I haven't gotten a boss down yet before I put out the guide. That should tell you how brutal this can be on a hunter, which is why I will ultimately suggest that if you have the ability to do so, do this on a different class. I'm going to go into a bit more detail than the other two classes because I do think it is important. The setup that was working for me was the following. Celestial Nighthawk, swapping to it right before you start damage. Threaded Spectre and Stylish Executioner with the Call Rocket Sidearm, Heliocentric Sidearm with Heal Clip and Incandescent, and Anarchy. Fragments were Blessing, Dawn, Protection, Devotion, and Purpose on Prismatic, Strand and Arc Siphon in the Helm for Orbs, Double Arc Surge and Recuperation in Boots, Double Arc Resist in the Chest, Double Time Dilation in the Class Item. I spent many attempts doing Stylish and Winter Shroud. It was working, but my best run ever was with Threaded Spectre, although it wasn't by much, so it just could have been a fluke. Launch Up, Pop Transcendence, Melee, then Grenade, then Anarchy, then Golden Gun. After that sequence, I kill the copies as quick as possible. The boss is going to teleport, maintain Anarchy and Transcendence Grenades and Melees for as long as you can on the boss. New wave of dudes are going to show up. They're melee based, so you can just kind of kill them in the background as you can. Boss is going to teleport back to the middle. Many shooting dudes show up now, and this is where you should pop Spectre and or try to go in Viz after tagging the shooting dudes with Anarchy, at the least the ones in the middle, all while trying to make orbs for bonus healing that you can pick up. Deposit the nuke clean up the rest of the shooting dudes, and then it's back to damage on the boss. If things go well, you should be getting a second super right around the time the boss is going to send you back to the start, so be quick about it, even if you just got to fire it off immediately. The idea is that you are killing the clones so quickly that they shouldn't have enough time to really plink at you. Healing is a luxury that you don't have a ton of, unless you have Velocity Baton, 
which is this dungeon's special ammo GL with attrition orbs. You can spam that on the boss to mass produce orbs to get some form of healing. I would show you, I don't have it. Some other things to consider here, hunters. Number one, max recovery. You are gonna have times where you wanna regen your HP through recovery. And if you only have four to five, it is painful watching that health meter. Two, continuously apply sever to the boss with your melee. Use facet of solitude if you must. You need to reduce your damage received as much as possible. I have put many hours into this, not even going for solo flawless, just a solo boss kill. And it is insanely difficult. Don't get too discouraged if it's just not happening because it is that hard. Alternatively, if you wanted to play things even safer than this, go with Void Hunter and just spam Anarchy and Invisibility on yourself with Vanishing Step and Trapper's Ambush running around avoiding lightning. It will take you even longer to beat this fight, but you'll have the security blanket of invisibility almost the whole time. This is an arena that you are going to want some practice on, even if it's just for dodging the lightning and getting a feel for the pace of it. It is an intensity that we have not yet seen in the game until now. This is definitely the hardest final dungeon boss when done solo, currently in the game, assuming no other cheese spots or strategies and stuff like that are used. It's not tough to live, but to live and deal good damage, that's tough. Feel free to leave some more advice for your fellow soloers in the comments, but I think that's all that I have. Best of luck in there. It's difficult. This was the toughest solo dungeon I've ever done. But if you can conquer this, you can conquer pretty much anything the game has to offer. Thank you all very much for watching. I will see you next time.